start the day, we have the stock markets down except the Nikkei. We've got the DAX 40 down almost 1%, NASDAQ down 0.1%. We've got the FTSE down just under 1%. We've got US 30 or Dow Jones down 015 and the S&P down just under 0.2%. So stock market's not looking too hot after the rate cut to end the week. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's that. Uh, the dollar is doing okay it's holding up somehow so we did obviously have positive data for the dollar yesterday uh however in my eyes it's outweighed quite heavily by the 50 basis point cut uh, and the markets are still digesting that uh, as far as i can see still looking for a break of this very strong key level so if we look on the weekly time frame you can see we've got this really really nice level throughout here just above the 100 uh, so I'm looking for a break below there for maybe a long-term target to around $90. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see if that happens. I'm not, uh, not getting too ahead of myself yet. Uh, Lee James, thank you very much. It's UK Nick. <laughs> I'll take that. Uh, London session was good on gold. Yes, the gold market has been rocketing recently. Uh, obviously driven mainly by the uh the rate cut we saw on wednesday so still no pullback on gold unfortunately but if you are sort of a breakout trader you could have caught this move quite nicely uh this was how much let's see yeah one percent move on gold not bad for um a quick sort of scalp or day trade really in terms of open positions we have got quite a few actually so i'm long on the pound dollar and i'm not going to tell you why I want you guys to tell me why I might be long on pound dollar. Uh, it's quite simple. There's no nothing complex behind it. Uh, but anyone that pays attention to the recent news um, in terms of central banks, you'll probably get it. Uh, oil also in oil, more in a technical aspect, but also again, because of the US rate cuts, uh, quite positive in that area. We are long on silver. We're still short on the do dollar Mexican peso and also short on dollar yen. So we did see a huge spike up this morning, and that was due to the Bank of Japan essentially not looking too hot. So obviously we did see a spike to the upside, however, still looking to continue this move to the downside. So I scaled in um, essentially right at the, the, the peak um, up here. Oh, well, I should say what I hope is the peak uh, because you know my entry so far has been quite accurate. So we'll see how this one moves for the next week or so. Uh, James, can you give some risk management advice? Yes, uh, risk one to 2% per trade. Um, if you're going into multiple trades on the same asset, so for example, if you're going long pound dollar, euro dollar and shorting dollar yen, similar to what I'm in, then you might want to reduce risk because you've got large exposure to the US dollar and you're trading it both ways. Um, so you need to be very cautious in that sense. Um, but yeah, generally, just don't be an idiot. Trading is a business. Regardless of your capital amount, you will never be a large capital trader if you can't manage to approach it as a business first. So, for example, if I give you a $100 account or a $1 million account, you'll approach it the same way if you don't have that sort of professional mindset. Um, when you say the market is still digesting 50 basis point cut, why is that? So... What you'll see when we get news, especially large news, so whether it's um, it could be a, a FOMC or um, what's it called, NFP, it's not a case of people get straight into the market. You'll see obviously a lot of volatility, but then there's people that still want to get into positions based on that 50 basis point cut. So what we might see is larger moves on the dollar. Um, can't find my arrow. Let me... Uh, here we go. So we might still see the dollar move to the upside and then move to the downside whilst people are trying to get into sell positions and then it's sort of digested and that's when it starts moving to the downside. Essentially, I mean, it's a bit more complex than that, but that's the, the rough idea. Uh, Abdul got it right. The reason I am long pound dollar is the central bank divergence. So at the moment, still relatively break even in actually slight drawdown after some profit. Um, but I placed it this morning, so that's fine. But yes, we had obviously quite an aggressive cut from the Fed and the Bank of England held at 5%. So we got the divergence there. 
Are we selling gold? We're absolutely not selling gold. Uh, can we look at GJ? Yes, we can look at GJ. Market analysis, free trading courses, edge finder data, and special offers. What do these things all have in common? They're all available for you right now inside of our free Discord. You can click the link down in the description below to join the free Discord today and get access to all of this and more. Stay up to date with all the latest trading information and A1 content. And if you want to upgrade to our gold VIP Discord that features every single trade that Trader Nick and our other professional analysts take, you can find the links for that in the description as well. So don't wait, go check out the free Discord today. So yeah, I mean, uh, GJ actually looks quite nice here. So what we see is, like I said, we've got the Bank of England holding rates. So that's positive for the pound. We also had uh, news come out from the Bank of Japan saying they're essentially not in a rush to start hiking rates. So essentially, we've had quite a nice move on pound yen to the upside. However, that still isn't going to change the larger landscape of this market, in my opinion. Uh, we've also got to pay attention to this, where price is rejecting this 200 daily moving average. If we can close above where we are now, essentially, that's great, but we still also have this level of resistance throughout here. So you've got two technical factors standing in the way of a long position. We also have, again, the larger landscape of this market. So technically, I'd be looking to potentially short where we are now. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to, and I'm not saying you should. Um, however, I would rather go short here rather than trying to go long. already sold gold i mean that's fine um however selling gold for me definitely isn't something i'd want to do um just according to my strategy and my rules but it doesn't matter if you can make money doing the opposite of me that's uh, also completely completely fine um please tell me when gold go down to 2575 i think gold will go down to 2575 um, in exactly three days, two hours, and five minutes. Uh, can you share analysis on DollarCAD? Yeah, we can take a look at DollarCAD. Uh, there was news for the Canadian dollar. I've seen it pop up, but I've not really paid attention because I'm not involved with the Canadian dollar at the moment. Um, yesterday, we went over this market, and I was saying that we were rejecting this 200 moving average on the daily we've also got quite a strong level of structure throughout here so you can see resistance turned support now acting as resistance again also again bouncing off the 200 so technically very similar to uj uh, sorry gj uh pound yen in terms of we've got quite a lot of technical factors standing in the way of a long position here we also have the fed cuts uh so would you really want to go long? In my opinion, no. However, I'm also not really a fan of the CAD, so I don't really want to go short. If you're looking to short the dollar, there's better assets to do that on or better currencies rather than the Canadian dollar. Um, I'm not sure exactly when Nick's back. I think it's probably Monday from what I understand, but I'm not sure. Uh oil i'm in on oil laura um i don't think it's doing too well at the moment it's currently in some drawdown but that's again that's completely fine this is more of a technical play um i'm also looking at getting a trade on bitcoin but this would be an intraday trade so what i do on my segments here i go over a lot of um a lot of the economics and a lot of the sort of swing trading aspects but i don't really cover my day trading things and it's normally because day trading, it's more simple and it doesn't give me as much to talk about. Um, and it's, to be honest, probably a bit more boring because this, the way I trade technicals, my meta trade is frozen. That's great. But the way I trade technicals when I'm day trading, it's very mechanical um, and there's not that much in terms of economics I account for. So, for example, like the pound dollar trade I showed you, it was just as simple as central bank divergence. There's not a case of looking at huge landscapes and 
trying to do long-term forecasts, it's a case of, okay, well, there's a slight divergence. Price is bouncing here. Um, looks good. I'm going to go in for a buy and, you know, maybe close out for 1% at the end of the day or 2%. Um, so the reason I'm looking to buy Bitcoin is we've got the 50, 50 moving average, which is the green, and the 200 moving average, which is red. Uh, we've got these in a bullish fan. Now we opened above the pivot point, which is this gray line right here where you see PP. And essentially there's lots of statistics behind these pivot points. So this is what I mean by it's very mechanical and it's a little bit boring. So for example, let's say price dropped down to S3. I know statistically there's a 90% chance that this level will get rejected and it won't close, uh, the market won't hold below S3. And if it does, it's not likely gonna, the market won't close below s3 or likely won't close below s3 uh, and the same with r3 that's off the screen right now so when we have price open above this gray line which it has done we've got a 65 percent chance that the market will close above the pivot points so you can see it's very very basic there's not much here and we just buy off levels of structure so you can see i've got these blue lines marked up at this very small level of um what was resistance and now acting as support so just looking to buy off there for a, you know, one to two percent profit. Um, Long-term target on Bitcoin is seventy thousand. But again, I don't really trade Bitcoin uh, or crypto in general. I, you know, you could ask me a lot of questions about crypto. I wouldn't be able to answer. Um, so it's purely just a technical trade. Anyway, we'll get we'll move on from there. Uh, Russell. Yes, so I'm still watching the Russell for a long position. The problem is we're kind of stuck at this level of resistance. I would like to see a pullback to around this FIB level. So what we've got here again is these moving averages. So we've got the 200 and the 50 that have changed from bearish to bullish. So I'm looking for some sort of entry within this zone and then a stop loss just below, possibly around here uh, and then take profit at this FIB extension. So Again, a very simple trade, but whether we can get the entry or not, I don't know. Um, I think this market is due for a pullback just by looking at it. And again, that's not really based on much, uh, more just um, experience, I guess. But um, yeah, if we can get this pullback, I'll definitely take the trade. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, the reason the Russell looks so appealing right now is because we've had the 50 basis point cut and rate cuts are quite positive uh, for the Russell because it's made up of small cap or smaller companies um, that do well from lower interest rates. Uh, gold still very, very bullish. Silver, pound, US dollar, yen. It'll be interesting to see when this updates uh, next week to see how the positioning changes after the rate cut. Um, because this, this is, uh, I think it gets updated every Thursday. Is it Tuesday or Thursday? If it's Thursday, then this will be accounting for the rate cut. So never mind. But if it's, I think it's published on Tuesday. Uh, sorry, I think it's filled out on Tuesday and then published on Thursday. I think. Um, I can't remember actually. Anyway, CAD bearish, Swiss bearish, uh, Bitcoin bearish slightly. Interesting. Retail positioning. Let's have a look. Oil is very bullish, actually, in retail. Uh, a lot of the commodities are, as, as well as the Russell. Uh, DAX and the S&P are bearish. Interesting. Normally, what we see, actually, is when retail are buying one of the things, so whether it be the S&P or selling the S&P, they do the same thing with the NASDAQ and the DAX. Uh, but it doesn't seem like that's the case today which is interesting. Uh, what's your sweet spot in number of trades taken per week? Uh, I don't really have a sweet spot, to be quite honest. Um, I'll trade what's there. You know, my goal is to make money. And as long as the market looks like I can make some money from it, then I'll be in. Um, but I don't like to overexpose on one thing. So for example, if I've got a lot of setups involving the dollar to the long side, I might take two of them and half risk. So split risk between both of those positions. Uh, so yeah. Trading volume gold much higher than silver. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Uh, so dollar card, euro card, copper, Dow. Uh, just thinking if I, it's interesting, actually, some of the yen pairs are popping up. What are you going to make me trade today? 
Right. I'm just kidding. Kind of looking at. Sorry, I didn't hear you. What'd you say? Oh, I just said, what are you gonna make me trade today? Oh, um, you know, I'm looking at the SPX as always. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking today, maybe towards the end of the day, we're gonna get a flush lower. That's when all the options contracts expire, futures contracts expire. Yep. Um, so, you know, maybe we could get some good, uh, I guess, like credit spreads down there if we want to look at uh, selling puts over the weekend, selling uh, bull put spreads. I think you'll get more premium because it's over the weekend and you'll get, um, if we do get a hard move, then uh, you could be in a good spot. I don't know. But I think if you take a bull put spread on a on a last minute flush on the market and then looking for tomorrow's expiration, I think maybe that could be a trade. So I'm kind of debating on that. Right now, we haven't really moved anywhere. We kind of That's opened true. up um, at 5,700. We're still kind of around that zone. So I'm wondering if uh, even the triple witching is going to do anything or if we're just going to hover around break even. But, you know, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to be looking for like a huge sell off. Mm -hmm. um, but. Yeah, everyone's every analyst is super bullish right now, so I don't, I don't necessarily think we could, we could look for any, you know, shorts on the market. Other than yeah, um, I think know, what, um, what we've seen. Already. Yeah, what went so? You you had mentioned bull put spreads. Um, I'm not doing that right now. Um, I am looking at. Um, so price is, is right here. Here's our FOMC low. There's our post FOMC high from yesterday. I could see price staying inside of this. I could see Doing triple witching, triple witching being bit being a bit of a non-event. Um, I put in a trade. I, I haven't gotten filled yet, but I did an SPX trade where I'm doing a bear call spread up here because I'm looking to see if triple witching will actually you know stay where it is, struggle to take out the highs from Thursday, but just work our way down. Like one thing that might again this this is random. But, um, you know, all the anticipation is triple witching today. But what would be the the big, like, middle finger to all traders out there would be like, we don't move at all today. And then Monday is like this weird, aggressively directional day. Um, there, ha In fact, this was, so that was like the first week of trading on a Tuesday. Um, this was a, you know, this sell-off was a Monday. Um, one of the, like, some of these, like, bigger directional days have been Mondays, which have been a little bit more surprising to me. Because usually Mondays are fairly quiet. Yeah, but anyway, I yeah I don't know. Um, you're saying there's gonna be massive order flows, right, towards the end of the day, just because everyone's got to get out. Arguably, I mean, triple witching can also be. Uh, I mean, it's average about 0.5 percent. It's already moved 0.5 percent. So there might be there might be some scrambling late in the day. I've got a gamma level around 564 on the spy, which would push us down another three dollars. That doesn't fill the gap from FOMC lows. That's just kind of right here in the middle. That's about the only thing I see on the radar that would be like, okay, if we go down a little bit this for today, uh, I can see that level being tested. That, that's about it. But I'm, I'm not like, I'm not taking a zero DT down to it. It's like, I mean, I took a trade this morning and it was perfect. Like little, little SPX trade there, made some money and that was it. And the market's actually been quite cooperative for the last, uh, you know, couple of hours. Or I guess an hour, about an hour and 20 minutes and open. So, so yeah, I'm also so thinking far. if we got if we got that today, we're probably kind of limited on on upside. So I'm wondering if we're just going to stay where we're at mm -hmm. or move lower. I'm looking at 5710, 5715. I think that's trading at like um, let me see the credit. Okay, you're going you're going tighter than me. I just put on a trade no. here. I did a uh, 5750 by 5755. It's trading for about 50 cents right now. I put in a pending order for $1.50 to see if price were to come up at all today. If price were to come up at all today and fail at that high, that should get me filled at a buck 50 and then see if it fades and then maybe has like a like kind of a gap fill like indecision day for Monday. So that that's what I put on is I went up higher than than you're talking. You're talking about not quite above the uh the Thursday high. You're talking a little bit tighter. Say 5710. No, not like 
not 730s or 40s, but 710 to 15, because that's where we opened up at. Yeah, we opened up at 710. Uh, are you talking about today then? Um, you want to like to trade for just today? Yeah. Okay. That makes that's it. I'm going from, I was going for a Monday trade, not today. I'm thinking that going. it's probably going to be price action to the upside is probably going to be limited. Yeah. Just for the day. Um, yeah. And if we do get that flush lower, it will look really nice. We're right here, man. Premium. Style. So this is something to watch for today on SPX. Um, if we hold, this is the gap higher pullback and then the, the, the rip for the uh, remainder of the day that melt up yesterday, we're right back down to the same low. If somehow price actually breaks that low, there could be some unwinding because this is an open, that's an open gap right there for the SPX and the SPY. Everything gapped up big yesterday. So if we break that, that lows around 5690 to 5685. If we see a nice confirmation below that, there could be just a, a little unwinding to the downside. So if, uh, my only concern with your 5710 there, Frank, is that's pretty tight to price. Like right there is saying that it doesn't come up and even test today's candle at all. Right? It's just tight. That's all. I mean, I mean it, it, it's it's fine. But if we were to, I mean, I don't know. You, you could be spot on, dude. I mean, if you call that, I'll cheer you on. But I'm, I'm, putting, my, I'm putting my trade up here. 5740, 5750. I want to be out of the way. So that's my style. I mean, I'm just I'm trying to think, why would we end up higher today? With why what's why? going on? Like, why would, why would we end green today? I don't know. Why would we end up two, two and a half to three percent higher after a Fed crash on Wednesday? Like the market clearly like was noisy and manipulative and then it just ripped up on Thursday. It's like, I didn't expect that. So market definitely reaction, does things I don't I expect. Yeah. I mean, the market does whatever it wants, but... Um, I mean, why would we end up higher? Because the market's still optimistic and structure wise, this is a low and the market bids it again. So we, we find a way to claw back and, you know, we just, we stay, look, we stay like, maybe this, this, this is a whole thing of like, you get a 0.25% pullback, 0.5% pullback. And the market's like, good enough by the rip or by, by the dip, you know? So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm dude, I'm, I'm so like skeptical on just the, the blow off top. Um, just, but I mean, looking at the S and P connecting some dots here, if we have resistance, it's, it's very possible resistance, resistance, there's still room to rip, but do we pull back first to like fill a gap? Do we have a higher low in here that gets started before we go higher? I don't know. Do we come back and retest the Labor Day sell-off lows? I don't know, but this is a structure I'd be watching, you know, uh, where, where would I get long? I'm going to buy the S and P here and I'm going to buy the S and P here. That's it. I, I want to wait for those opportunities. Like I'd love to do like a five or 10 contract trade at these levels, because I think that's a good spot to be buying and seeing the market hold and then seeing some, some, uh, you know, good support in the market, but I, I'm not doing anything massive yeah. here. It's like, I'm just taking steps. Like, and as I'm, as we're talking right now, the last few minutes, look over where we are and we're right back down to that low. Like that's getting a little bit more aggressive here. The last 15 minutes of trading, but that's going to be the critical spot. Can we break that low at 5686 and close below it? Because if we can, now there's room for a gap to look like we have the ability to fill it. It may not fill it today. I mean, that'd be crazy if it does. But um, if we do fill it today, then freaking sweet, I guess. <laughs> it just means I won't get my uh, SPX grade filled at the top. But if we bounce here, we just stay sideways and triple witching becomes kind of a bit of a non-event. That's why I'm a little skeptical for Monday because who knows? Monday could be like a weird, a weird uh, directional day when it's like, yeah, we just waited for triple witching to fake everybody out, and then all the all the real order flows come in on Monday. You know? Okay. It's anybody's so you're game, thinking dude. that if if it's a non-event, price doesn't really move today. You're thinking tomorrow or Monday could be a heavy yeah. swing lower. I think I think Monday okay. could be one of those days. Like typically, like Mondays are usually the low of the week. Like Mondays, Tuesdays are usually like slight side, like sideways calm days or pullbacks. And then the market spends the rest of the week pulling back. So if we start off on rough footing, let's, let's just look at a week. So we go Monday and let's say the market is, uh, you know, flat or down. And then you've got Tuesday to kind of stabilize Wednesday to help correct Thursday and Friday to try to get back up into salvage a green, a green week. 
I mean, I, I would be curious to see. I mean, I know historically you've got about 54% of days are bullish. Um, I'm curious how many weeks, if we have how many weeks are, are bullish percentage wise. Um, I'd like to actually, let's, I don't know. I don't, can chat, chat GPT give me that? How many uh, weeks a year does the S&P finish positive? 56.1 uh, chance of closing any given week positively. By the way, out of 2871 weeks, there are two weeks where the S&P closed entirely unchanged. 1965 and 1977. So just on a weekly average, I mean, I'm not saying that's a crazy edge for traders, but 54% chance of a daily bullish move and 56% chance of a weekly bullish move. I mean, that's why if you have any pullbacks on Mondays and Tuesdays, you're, you're really getting a chance to buy lows and then see if the market just recovers a little bit. So I don't know. This It's not a bad play. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I like that. the market's so shrugged off pretty much everything lower. for 90 years, so... Say, you say? say we get a flush lower either today or Monday. Okay. Um, let's say it's Monday. Would okay. you be taking like a, a bull put spread there? Um. So if you're saying if we had a flush down for Monday? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? If we have a flush down Monday, I'm probably not taking a bull put spread there. If, I'm, if we get a flush down Monday, I'm probably looking to see, does this market actually go somewhere like this? Where we have a bit of a fake out trade you know you you and i talked about like a broadening pattern um i'm just trying to make some sense of like where would this broadening pattern be i think this structure this is why i kept it on my chart because if i'm connecting highs connecting lows i mean if if this is going to be an interim top you know do we fill this gap in the fed if there's momentum to that do we come back down and try to revisit this uh labor day sell-off because if we do that I'm not going to do a bull put spread at this FOMC low. I'm going to do a bull put spread at the Labor Day low and then maybe this August 5th low. So I'll get yeah. there and there as far as I would take this and hold it to expiration, hold it to expiration, looking to see if the market goes up. Um, I think those are pretty good opportunities to me, at least to establish some credit spreads. I so, like that too. Yeah, it's not, it's not bad. I think, um, um... What is anybody that just uh, clacking away at gold and silver? I mean, gold's up uh, again, all time highs. Awesome. Like, I keep wanting to get in like the easiest trade in the world, but it won't slow down. Yeah. Uh, what do you, what are you, you doing on gold to try here. to participate? Anything? I'm just trying to buy GLD. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely not buying all time highs. That's for sure. But um, I mean, I've got, uh, let's see. It's about $6,500 of profit on GC for futures. Um, my Baidu trade looks like I'm going to, I'm going to take an assignment today on Baidu that 90 by, uh, I think it's 90 by 70. I'm taking an assignment there. I'm going to repair Baidu. I'm willing to take some ownership there. Um, GLD. I still own it. I'm up 10 grand. Um, I wish I owned a lot more of it, but what makes up for my little, uh, you know, to me kind of a baby, baby position in GLD uh, that's where my SLV is is much bigger, like 37K and, and SLV trying to go after hopefully double that. I, I'm hoping I can get like 60, 70 grand out of uh, SLV. And then GLD, if I get a pullback, great. But I'm trading a lot of futures just to generate the income along with the direction. Um, SLV is a combination of uh, credit spreads, naked puts, own shares. I've got it covered up to 35, which is above my first measure move at 33. So I'm, I'm sticking with those like, I like them a lot. Um, I just, I'm kind of, I don't know. And maybe I'm like put too much emphasis on silver, but I just hate buying gold at all time highs. And at this stage, since we've made, no, you know, one, two, three, four, I mean, we've made five all time highs in the last two weeks of trading. And I mean, a pullback here would be fine, but maybe that's all we get. I mean, I, I just, I want to see something, I guess, a little bit better to offer up. Like, give me, get, just give us a better pullback, would you? So, I don't know, but if the dollar I think we're is get a, a minor pullback, yeah. But is the is the minor pullback going to be dollar related? That's what I'm debating. Is like the dollar's choppy. The dollar's at those multi uh, lows right now. I could see the dollar, you know, getting stronger in the near term just because it's it's a bit oversold and overextended. And I could see gold. I mean, we saw that reaction on Wednesday too. You know, gold dropped as the dollar 
I don't want to say pop because that's annoying to rhyme, but the dollar did uh, jump up on Wednesday after. If I could go back to the currency strength chart, you know, we saw the dollar immediately get flushed down. And then by the end of the day, the dollar was back up and gave gave back all those those weak the, the weakness. So that was where gold was indecisive. But then Thursday, Friday, gold's like, yeah, we're still going. We're here. So anyway, I mean, yeah. dollar short term could give us a pullback on gold, but I don't know, man. I mean, I guess the good thing is if you're long gold, just keep moving stop losses. At this point, like if you don't get a pullback, I'm probably not buying much of the all time highs, but I'm just going to wait. I mean, I've, I've got uh, I've got some credit spreads in here. I'd like to see a pullback so I can put here's why I want to pullback. Because even if I don't buy more gold, what I could do is a pullback. Let's say a pullback to here. I could go far enough down to then place a credit spread. And that way I can get out of the way, but that little sell-off can increase the IV, increase the premiums that I can sell. And I can say, look, I'll sell it lower and I'll still get paid a decent credit if it doesn't get assigned. But I could also you know, manage my GLT position a little bit better. Did you know we do a live trading show Monday through Friday with guests from all over the world? To get notified when we go live, click the bell button next to the subscribe button or check in at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. We have helpful, free content in the description below and on our website, a1trading.com. Thanks for watching today's video and we'll see you tomorrow.